It's another beautiful Sunday afternoon. This is Robin Minds. Welcome. My name is Ebuka Obuchendo. Thanks a lot for joining us. Um, we'll have a great show for you today, as always. But we're going to, of course, quickly touch on the week that was last week. Uh, on Wednesday, I believe, June 12th, we finally heard from Mr. President. He gave us a speech, um, the long-awaited uh, inauguration speech, where he rolled out his plans for the next four years. A lot of reactions still pouring out with regard to the speech. Um, not a lot of concrete uh, promises there, but um, I mean, I believe some hope was offered uh, with regards to, you know, bringing people out of poverty, making, the sh making sure the economy is better, and just hopefully getting a better four years. We're looking forward to a solid team, like he promised, uh, in the speech that will be assembled hopefully soon, uh, so that the second term can kick off in earnest. We need uh, Nigeria going and working again so that, um, you know, we can bear the fruits or rip the fruits. Uh, of what a great nation should be. Uh, wishing Mr. President all the best. Wishing Nigeria all the best. Looking forward to the next four years. We're going to start off the show today with something completely different. Now, last Thursday, June the 13th, was World Albinism Day. And we want to talk about that on the show today to hopefully better understand um, what this condition is about and how we as Nigerians can be a part of the narrative and the story. I have here with me two very important guests, Eniola Alufa and Chimeze Udechuku. Thanks for being here today. Thank you for having Thank us. You for having so, uh, you know, whenever we hear about a, a day celebrating something or to mark something, people are always a little confused. Why do we need a day, for example, to, for albinism? Does it mean that after that day we shouldn't talk about it anymore? You know, what does this day mean and why is it significant? Um, okay. Uh, well, I believe it's just, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't celebrate it on any other day, but it's good. It's just like we have our birthdays, but it doesn't mean we are not important on all that day. Yeah. And we have some specific days that are for reasons. So I believe yeah. that's just what it means. So what does this day mean? What, 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 are, what, are, what sort of, what, was, what happened on Thursday? Let me just put it that way. Um, a lot happened on Thursday globally. First, there was uh, an event at the United Nations headquarters in New York. Uh, it will interest you to know that the whole Albinism International Awareness Day started um, in 2014 after a uh, UN resolution as passed by the General Assembly mandating the United Nations Human Rights Commission. And there were, an office was created for a United Nations independent expert, which um, currently is being handled by Nigerian, Bawosa Ero, uh, for the rights, enjoyment of the rights of persons with albinism. Now, on Thursday, there are, um, persons with albinism, particularly those of us in Lagos, like I told you, there was a whole lot of events across the world. On Thursday, there was an event at the United Nations Information Center, and we had, um, you know, a general interaction a panel discussion. We had an exhibition on um, titled Angels Among Men. It was by a visual artist, Damilola Onofua. Um, we had to show a short film on titled Beyond the Complexion. And so the, 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 the conversation, like Enola did say, is not just for that Thursday alone. It's an ongoing conversation that we, we, we continue to um, have, both online and offline, to, like you said in your introduction, change the narrative with regards to perception about persons with albinism. Let's talk about perception now. Um, this condition has been around for as long as humanity has been, but it's still very misunderstood. You know, and I don't know if we hear a lot of stories from a lot of different countries, you know. Yeah about how extreme some of the cases are. I don't know how extreme it is in Nigeria, but take us through some of, you know, some of the perceptions you come across as a Nigerian who, who has this condition. Okay. Um, the first one that is most common is that albinos don't eat salt. People with, <laughs> albinism, with albinism, that they don't eat salt. But obviously it's not true. You know, um, there are times when, when I eat outside, some people will be shocked and then they'll be looking at me like, so you eat salt. So that's like one very common one. But then there are others like that we don't see in the night, which is not true also. In fact, most of these, these perceptions are, they are false. Yeah. They are not usually true. So we have so many. We have the common ones like um, the not seen in the night. We have, the, in fact, there was a time a lecturer said this same thing that albinos, that when they eat salt, they become more susceptible to sunburn. But it's not true. You know, normally it's sunburn that Cutties all those brown or black yeah. spots, those freckles and things like that. So yeah. there are just so many. I don't know if you want me to start. Yeah. So where, where are you coming in contact with like, 
the average Nigerian yeah. now, because I know mm -hmm. Nigerians have a tendency to be very politically incorrect, you know. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. Just, <laughs> you know, I, I'm just, how easy or how tough is it to coexist with Nigeria? Well, it depends on the class of people. Okay. Like when, when, for example, when I'm among educated people, sometimes they don't even look at me like I'm strange. But when I'm among maybe just some average people, they just tend to look like... And then sometimes maybe somebody is introducing me that, okay, there's this lady, her name is Daniela, she's this and that. And then the person sees me, their eyeballs go large, <laughs> like, and then they'll relax and say, okay. So, really on, a, on, a, yeah, so on the average, I think yeah. people still act strange. Yeah. Why do, you, why do you think this still is the case? Like I said, this condition has been around forever. Why, does, why is it still seen as, quote-unquote, strange? I think it's, um, it boils down to information. It's what yeah. you know. I like to say that knowledge that is not expressed is not... Because the whole essence of acquiring knowledge is to express that knowledge so that people can understand. So, um, yes, perception. Um, what people understand... Um, some of these perceptions, you know, trying to digress a little, uh, has it that albinism, people, persons with albinism are cursed, you understand? You talked about the extreme uh, cases in Malawi, in Tanzania, in Mozambique, in Namibia, killed. where they are killed, maimed, um, their body parts are used for rituals because they feel, they believe, believe that a body parts of PWs, like, you know, are, can fetch them money, can be used for like our local Ritual, juju, yeah. you know, for charms and stuff. Some even is as weird as one of the perceptions as, uh, as weird as the blood of a PWA can cure HIV. So it's that, um, you know, it, it's weird because people don't have that education. And that's what we, uh, with the campaign that we have, the Beyond the Complexion campaign, we go um, trying to sensitize, you know, move the conversation, you know, change the perception from discrimination and stigmatization to acceptance. Because it starts with acceptance. It, start, it starts with, um, from the family, you know, having a strong um, foundation in familial love. A parent of a PWA, if you don't accept your child, then the society cannot accept that child for you. So it yeah. starts with first accepting your child, teaching your child, um, the PW and in, 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 indeed um, pigmented persons also, to say, hey, the only difference between a PWA and a pigmented person is a lack of um, melanin, yeah. which causes pigmentation. Yeah. So you, yes. Sorry, you, you did mention there, you know, you mentioned child quite a few times. And I wonder, what, I wonder what, how, how was it growing up? <laughs> and was the, was, is, has there been a difference in sort of the way you're treated by people over the years? Has it gotten better? Has it gotten worse? Is it the same? Uh, growing up was interesting because... Um, I had the usual taunts, pranks, um, you know, there were a whole lot of um, things that I went um, through. But like I said, family accepted. Yeah. I had a strong support system in my, fam um, with my family. Uh, going out, primary school, it was tough. I had to many times, I, 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 it, the condition made me, um, my love for um, spoken words and, you know, for literary works to be, um, you know, to, to increase to a large extent. Because, because there was a challenge in looking at the board, I would want dictation. In fact, from primary three, I, I instigated, when I was in primary three, I instigated um, a process, you know, uh, so that from primary three, four, we had teachers dictating rather than writing, writing on the board. So it made me learn words quickly. It in, expanded my vocabulary bank. You know, so I could speak effortlessly with elocution because I had to read and read and read. Then to secondary school, to the university, out again and back to the university to get a master's degree. You know, when people see you, it's gotten better over the years because apart from um, people within accepting it, I have also have accepted and owned it. And so when I come into any um, environment, I first announce my presence, not by my color, but by what I have to offer. So coming to the table is based on what I can offer you. So you look beyond my complexion first to knowing what I can offer. So when I leave, you, you are not introducing me as 
that albino guy yeah. or that light-skinned guy but for what that, you've done you understand but that guy who wowed me with what i was able to put on the table yeah is it the same was it the same for you growing up is there yes. a difference now uh yes yeah, sure it's much better now yeah. because like you said the most important thing is what you bring to the table if when people move closer to you and they find out that you are beyond your skin you know they, be, they realize that okay yes there's more like he said they don't introduce you as uh, that albino person no like where i work for example is the same thing so there's no there's no in fact where I work, i've not even experienced any kind of stigmatization because everybody just they just want to know okay what do you have to offer yeah. so that's the most important so for now i believe much better. Yeah. Um, so, which, which brings me to my next question. So, you're talking about Nigeria. Do you find that living as in, in a, with albinism in Nigeria is, how would you rate it? Is this something that, I mean, because I, I believe everywhere in the world there's some sort of, mm -hmm. you would always get the stare sometimes, yes. people are a little mm -hmm. trying to, because people mm -hmm. still don't completely understand the True. condition. But living in Nigeria, how is it? <laughs> well, it's not a bed of roses. Yes. It's not, like I said before, it's about where you are. The environment you are is important. When you go to some places, you get good accommodation. But then mm -hmm. when you go to some other places, they still look at you. And then when you're just work, walking by and stuff, people still say some derogatory things like, yeah. ah, see, I've seen this one and that one. So I would say most times, people that live in developed nations you find it easier yeah. than here in nigeria yeah. and you know one problem we have in nigeria is that people don't read once it doesn't concern you they don't they really, don't really care, care about understand it. what the next person's yes, they don't is. care about it so that's yeah. uh, speaking of discrimination now because th that's a very valid point she just brought up there you know we hear a lot of stories sometimes about you know getting a job or you getting an apartment you know and the landlord finds out who it is you know like you said most of these other countries they are laws against discrimination and you know they're enforced do you find that that's a challenge here for people with albinism with things like that you know you know um getting a job okay i i belong to a group um a professional group the human resource um learning academy and um there was a time we, had, we were talking about this issue and then i had to put it on the table and i said see if a person with albinism comes you know to apply for a job and there are lots of um, successful PWAs out there who are in the academia, um, in the creative industry. Many of them just like to work behind the scene. Now, your rejection of that person shouldn't be on the basis of his skin color. It should be because from your assessment, from what the person has presented, the person does not merit that um, uh, job as the case may be. Now, I also belong to another foundation, the Onomeakin Lumajo Foundation, where we try to um, lend our own voices to changing the narratives. And that continues to help us with what we do. So, to your question, yes, you still find these things. You, I've been to some job interviews and, you know, CV, you read, and then the person comes and like, put that in, my name is Chimizu Udichuku, I'm here. The stairs come first. And then... The HR person tends to immediately, you know, try to, try to just, okay, <laughs> just take a seat and let we flow. Do you understand? So, living in Nigeria has its own challenges generally for all Nigerians. Then, add being a PWA, you know, it's difficult to do some things. It's difficult to walk in some places, to go to some places, to, you know, find yourself in some areas. So, yes, um, we, we may not, we may have overcome some of these challenges because of our willingness to embrace and be outspoken but there are a lot still um in 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 very pitiable conditions in yeah. in, in you know those who do not have those voices who have come yeah. to just say well you know as we say in nigeria i have accepted my fate yeah. let's whatever life mm -hmm. let's just see it yeah. that way yeah. So just to clarify, PWA means persons with albinism. albinism. Yes, yes. That's, so the, that that's the official understand. term by the United Nations, yeah. rather than albinism. So what, what would you like to see done differently? I mean, looking at the country, looking at the society, what sort of things would you like to see happen to, to say that, okay, it's a bit of an ideal society to live in? Uh, well, people, like he said, acceptance. People should accept that people with albinism are just like every other person. The only difference is the lack of melanin. So people shouldn't attach any other maybe spiritual belief or any other kind of belief. They should just take everybody, they should just take the person at 
somebody with a different shade of complexion. Yeah. So if that can happen, then they will look at them like, how do they think? Do they, do, are they brilliant? And it will be easy to relate with albinos better yeah. than, you know? So I think the, the, the summary is just that if everybody can look at people with albinism as this, this, this next person to them, are there okay. things government can do, you think? Uh, well, because it's really, I mean, you can't enforce true. beliefs or anything, yeah. but are there certain laws, maybe like anti discrimination uh, laws? What sort of things would you like yeah. to see from government? Uh, well, I heard, I'm not really sure about the disability, Bill. Laws, but yeah. I personally would not say that albinos are disabled. disabled. I wouldn't say so. I think there should be special, there should be different laws that would apply to people with albinism, like in schools, secondary schools, primary schools, like laws for teachers to be able to give special seats to albino children or maybe dictate to them and things like that. So from, from there to the job aspect and all other aspects, that's yeah. what I think. So if those laws can be in place then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about you? I think first things first is what's the intent or the intention behind whatever laws that will be created. They, they see that they, there's this thing among, um, um, you know, when it comes to law and legal technology, that there's a spirit and letter behind every law. So what's the spirit behind it? Whatever letter that will be written, what are the intentions? Is it for the sake of um, PC parties? I, for one, I don't like PC parties, no. and I do not welcome you to it. If you create anyone, I don't go, you know. I'm not the type that give, give, give. Yes, there should be an enabling environment. What do we need from God? There was an attempt um, to uh, not just only the um, um, anti-discrimination bill for persons with disabilities, but there was an attempt for to create an, a national emergency uh, agency for um, something. It's a long name, you know, some agency for albinism and something. So it went through the national assembly. I think it's still there. I don't know the stage. Yeah. It is now. Government. This, um, through its through the uh, national orientation agency has a lot of work to do with regards to sensitization that see people you is are, are just normal mm -hmm. human beings mm -hmm. it's only a lack of melanin so mm -hmm. yes we need to see that um, sensitization in our different um, local languages you understand so that people can come to have that uh, can come to embrace PWEs. We're not asking for PT parties. We're not mm -hmm. asking for handouts. We're saying let what is proper, let the right things be done so that we can have that harmoni uh, harmonious coexistence amongst each other. Mm -hmm. So yes, dictate when you can. Don't see it like you're doing that PWA favor. Mm -hmm. If the PWA deserves to get an A, he gets an A. If it deserves, he or she deserves to get an F, he or she deserves to get an F. Give the PWA as much attention as you would give to a normal um, a pigmented person in the same class. But again, you know, encourage the child because, I'm um, sorry to say this, it starts from the foundation. Aside the family, the teachers have a, long, a, a, yeah. a bigger role to play. When a child, go, a PWA goes to school and doesn't get the kind of attention he or she uh, you know, needs from the teacher, I don't want to say deserves, he or yeah. she needs from the teacher, what's the essence of it? He or she believes, I don't need to go to school anymore. And once that child gets that mindset, from that cognitive it's hard state, to get them back. It, you understand that yeah. there's, there's a huge disconnect. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much. Um, well, it, I think things like this also help for people to keep understanding. The yeah. more people are aware, uh, the more they understand that, you know, especially because there's no law that says anybody can have a child who has albi who's an albino or who has albinism mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. there's, everybody can be a carrier. And yes. like you said, people need to read more because mm -hmm. you might be in a situation where you need to also mm -hmm. help. Someone in that place. Thank you. Yes. We get married. Yes. Yes. We get married. <laughs> of, course our <laughs> <laughs> of course you yes. do. Thanks a lot for being here today. We'll Thank continue this conversation.